Investing in the current market is quite tricky. The Australian stock market is near all-time highs, the US stock market is near all-time highs, and this is a common theme among many developed countries, although there has been a few wobbles lately due to the Chinese property market. And to make matters harder, if we take money out of the stock market and put it into traditional defensive asset classes, so think cash and bonds, then we're getting very little return on our capital because interest rates are at record lows. So if we don't want to keep lots of money in the stocks because we think valuations are stretched and we don't want to keep lots of money in defensives because we're earning very little return on our capital, where do we look? Well, this is where alternatives can play part of your portfolio. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor. Welcome back to the channel for another video. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button because I post regular videos about how you can do more with your money. The alternative asset universe is quite broad and it can include things like hedge funds, private equity, unlisted infrastructure, and even some more random style asset classes like vintage cars and artwork. And typically these are investments that a lot of people see as reserved only for the wealthy, but that's simply not true. There are, there are ways to access good alternative assets for the everyday person as part of a well-diversified portfolio. Now the benefit of alternative asset classes is that they typically have very little correlation to more traditional asset classes. So if you think about it, if the stock market crashes, your alternative asset class won't necessarily crash as well. In fact, some alternatives could actually make money in a falling market. And this low correlation makes alternative asset classes very appealing in the current market. Now I do still consider them a growth asset class because they are gonna come with some volatility, but they're gonna be generally less volatile than traditional growth assets like stocks, but produce a higher return than traditional defensive assets like bonds. There are a number of alternative asset classes that we're introducing into portfolios at the moment. So the first of those was a commodities play. So given the potential for inflation and the current economic outlook, we wanted a little bit more exposure to commodities. But commodities can be quite volatile. So to reduce the volatility, but still have exposure to commodities, we used a, an alternative resources fund, which protects on the downside using short positions. We're also introducing a number of market neutral funds. Now this is a strategy where if done right, they can make money in both a rising market and a falling market. And they do this through the use of paired long and short positions or derivatives. So it's a way to still get equity type exposure, but hedge out some of that risk. And finally, we're also introducing some real return funds. Now this is a multi-asset type strategy whereby they invest in different strategies and different asset classes depending on the market condition. So it's kind of like a whole portfolio in one fund. But the investment objective is to provide a smoother return for investors. So they're not aiming to shoot the lights out or anything. They're aiming around for around a six to eight percent return. And when you think markets are hot, that's not too bad. There are a number of other alternative assets that we're looking at for portfolios at the moment, but we're still running our due diligence on those. But one thing to be careful about when you're investing in alternative assets is, as you can probably tell, they are quite complex or they can be very complex. And so it's very, very, very important that you pick the right manager. Now we make sure before we invest any money with any of these people, we run it through our due diligence process and we also like to meet the manager as well to get a full understanding of what's going on. Some of the other downsides of alternative assets include the following. Generally, the management expense ratio is higher with some of these alternative strategies. This is because the costs and the expertise to run the alternative strategy is generally higher. In a rising market, your alternatives will typically underperform. The alternative strategies we invest in hedge away a lot of the market exposure and therefore you can't expect them to perform as well as a long only fund in a rising market. 
They are there for diversification and to protect on the downside. They are still a growth asset. Alternative strategies aren't a magic asset class that will produce a reasonable return year on year without any risk. That doesn't exist. Like all investments, they have risk. On the risk ladder, they sit somewhere between traditional defensive asset classes and traditional growth assets. Don't put all of your assets into alternatives. Alternatives are there to form part of a well-diversified portfolio and you shouldn't put all your money into alternatives or any other asset class for that matter. So I hope this gives you a little overview of some alternative asset classes that you might be able to incorporate into your portfolio. Particularly if you're running the traditional 60-40 portfolio, so 60% growth, 40% defensive, Typically those people have been hit pretty hard with a low interest rate environment. So alternatives might be a good way for those people to take a little bit more risk in their portfolio for a slightly higher return without going all the way to stocks. But that's it for me today guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.